There's the camera. I moved it. Hello. We're doing our top 20 video game music show. This week's theme is arranged tracks, which means anything that is a official remake or remaster or rearrangement of an older video game track. For example, the music in the Final Fantasy VII remake are newly arranged versions of songs from the original Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy X remaster did that as well. My examples are all Final Fantasy related, but thanks to Rudy, Longbow, Chiptune Brony, Zemnis, Chris, and Claudio, you're going to get a whole bunch more examples. Up first, from Suicoden 3, this is Kaze no Zawameki, Journey, composed by Keiko Fukami, Masahiko Kimura, and arranged by Jiro Okada, chosen by Rudy. Thank you. worth it to hear that guitar solo in a second but I wasn't expecting this you know based off that opening it's more like a, like kind of an African you know like a tribal beat like really kind of syncopated beat and then just a simple kind of flute everything seems so humble and then all of a sudden it just kicks in with this like super modern advanced like spicy jazz version there's so much cool performance on there too it makes such a difference when the drums and the sax 
and uh, and the guitar as well are played for real. You know, there's so many little subtleties you can you can do with each of the notes and little articulations and just sort of transport you a lot more. Oh, I see. So the beginning's more in line with the original. So I guess they use that as a little transition. Works well. Next up from the King of Fighters 96, this is Arashi no Saxophone 2, composed and arranged by the SNK sound team and brought to us by Longbow. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. There is always that thing where we have the surprising theme of the week and there'll be something you didn't expect, hence the surprise, but it does exist in all of the tracks and uh, it could be saxophone. Which I guess if you're going to be letting a live band and a more jazzy band take over, then you're probably going to get a lot of sax in sort of the lead. And it kind of gives it like this fun feel of like, uh, there is the original, but we're doing the arranged theme and it's a little more fun. One second. Yeah, really fun track. We're probably going to hear a bunch more like that. Or now that I've said it, probably none. Next up, look at these two body pillows. Realizing that they don't have organs and can never truly live or ever truly love. It's like, it looks like they're in the washing machine right now. These body pillows are washable. You know what that means. So, Star Ocean, the second story, put out in 1998. This is the theme of Rena, or Rena, composer and arranger, Motoi Sakurava, chosen by Chip Tumbroni.
nice track. It's from an arranged album that was released later in the same year as the game. Cool. Yeah, I like that. It starts off with that simple kind of E minor. So cool. And then the uh, chorus goes to like E minor, B minor, C. So I like when it goes, and then later on they do E minor. So instead of going E minor to B minor and C, it goes E minor, B7. Huge epic chords. Well, chord changes. Big dramatic epic soulful. I love it. All my favorite stuff going from a minor to a major. That was nice. It is interesting. Though. Like you can tell that it was. Uh, um, I'm Jack Black. Oh no. He did compose Peaches. Good for him. Um, swelling, melancholic, tense. Are you describing? Your time with the body pillow. Next up, speaking of Final Fantasy, I said something about it earlier. From Final Fantasy fourteen, this is Forged in Crimson, composed originally by Nobuo Uematsu, but arranged by Kenichi Mayamada and chosen by Zenmus. <laughs> Definitely a really playful version. I'm trying to think. Um, so this is originally from Final Fantasy IV, Forge and Crimson. Kind of be nice to hear the original one. Eh? Final Fantasy IV, Forge and Crimson. No, 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 no. Final Fantasy IV. Oh, it's the battle with the four fiends. That's it. God, it's so orchestral for its time, eh? I can see why they went with like a really sort of fun, over the top arrangement. This is. I mean, because of the instruments he's using may give it this like kind of classical regal affair, but it's like the way he's playing is very. Almost kind of reminds me of what he would do eventually with um, One Winged Angel. You know, a lot of like stops and starts and really just like colorful and like cartoony almost. I wonder what the dubstep part's gonna sound like. 
Hey, next up from Halo 2. That's fun. This is the Halo theme, the Mjolnir mix, composed by Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore, featuring Steve Vai. Yeah. Guitar God himself. <laughs> I think he's using an Ebo for that. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah! I need a drum. <laughs> you know, um, Steve Vai, like, you know, he's in that realm of, like, uh, the guitar gods, like, Ingway Malmsteen and um, Joe Satriani and stuff, but he's uh, pretty tasteful, and here he is, too, you know? He, like, goes around and plays and does, like, crazy sweet picking, and but he, a lot of it's just, like, really soulful guitar bends and, you know, really not relying on a lot of, like, delay or reverb or anything. It's, like, a fairly kind of dry but distorted tone but he's such a master oh like playing with that last feedback there to perfectly sync up with the fade out of the track and the strings it's fucking awesome man Halo Collection's good I played a bit of that on the Game Pass it's nice to swap between the new and the old graphics something about the old graphics I just love the charm of and the original intent it reminds me, I gotta play the new um, System Shock remake too. All right, so this next one is from X Men vs. Street Fighter, one of my all time favorite arcade games. Put out in 1996. This was a great uh, crossover after they had made the X Men arcade game. And then I think X Men vs. Street Fighter was the first crossover. I don't think, it, or was it Marvel vs. Capcom? No, X Men vs. Street Fighter was first. Anyways. With that interesting information gone through, we're going to be hearing the Ryu theme. And this is chosen by Claudio. So the Ryu theme from the original Street Fighter 2 played on X-Men vs. Street Fighter.
Yeah, I think that, uh, that guitar works pretty well. I think putting the wah effect on it makes it sound a little less fake. Because wah already makes guitar sound a bit kind of fake and different. And I think they got some nice... They put a little bit of waver on there to give it like kind of a natural feel. But the drums sound really good and the bass and, you know, everything behind them. <laughs> that synth bass. Yeah, I think it sounds like, at that time, the natural sort of evolution of the of the Ryu thing it doesn't sound too like bastardized to me. I think it still keeps all the like punch and the dynamics of it. I mean, Yoko Shimomura stuff in there was bloody genius. I I still think out of everything she's done, and it's so impressive everything she's done, that the Street Fighter Two track might still be her best work in terms of the variety and uh, and just. Like, she created a whole era and of music. It's, you know, not to be taken lightly. She was just obviously really inspired when that stuff was coming out. And like, the Ryu theme, the Ken theme, Guile theme, of course. All, almost all of them are, like, fucking incredible. Hey, we're going to uh, visit an old friend. Hey there, Matt with glasses. Slightly less tanned, different lighting in a different room. How you doing? You look a little... You look cold. You look like you're wearing a sweater. It's hot where I am right now. But it's good to see you, old friend. I'm sorry. Um, this is from Xenogears, this next track. It is Creed. C-R-E-I-D. And it also says Dajil. D-A-G-I-L. Which I guess is the place that you visit. Or Dajil. Composed and arranged by Yasunori Mitsuda and chosen by Rudy. Oh, maybe the album is Creed. Oh man, another prog solo. I freaking love that uh, that bass line. That um, it's like isn't that, isn't that rad? Um, boom. I guess it's got that kind of like Arabic scale to it. 
It's just like every note it goes, you're not expecting at all. You're expecting more of like a. It's going from that major third to the fourth is really strange. And then to go to the major seventh. <laughs> And then it just modulates that. Huh. God, I love that uh, bass line so much. This is another one that's just fun. And it's pretty cool because like you see here, so it looks like it's yeah, Yasunori know, Mitsuda and the Millennial Fair, so he's got a band together. So they're his songs. So if he's if he's gonna have fun with them, then you know he's the only person you have to worry about like offending or anything, right? And I think it, it's just nice to have the original composer there to kind of guide it. Like, all right, if we're gonna fuck up the song in a good way, then this is where we're gonna do it. Well, here's a franchise that has a lot of arrangements: Super Smash Brothers, Brawl. We're starting with this is. A legendary song from this series of shows that we've been doing. Sticker Brush Symphony. Composed by David Wise. This arrangement is by Michiko Naruke. Chosen by Longbow. Hallowed Ground they're taking on with the song. Let's see what they do with it. I like that guitar. You know, uh, at the beginning, the something turned me off a bit by. I think it was the like kind of electronica sounding, <laughs> but as as it grew on, as it went on, it grew on me because I think I really liked that they use acoustics. Like, okay, obviously you can't play Sticker Brush Symphony in its original form. It's a Smash Brothers game, like you said. It's an action game. It's a fighting game. So you gotta amp it up, but I'm so glad they didn't just go with electric guitars and with that lame... I'm just so sick of a lot of electric guitars in, in um, video game music, which I say that it makes it sound like I disapprove of the ones that we've just heard. And those have been great because they're played by Steve Vai and really talented players. I'm talking more about like, there's a lot of like YouTube kind of um, bedroom guitars that just sort of like make everything metal and they don't really have any express like they're playing the notes for the melody but there's no like expression or, or dynamics you know uh, they just rely on like the um, the sustain you get from a shitload of distortion and gain and a little bit of delay but anyways this is like I really like that kind of like it's like a flamenco kind of style guitar almost but done in a bit more of like a progressive kind of um, 
way. It's like a, I don't know, like a kind of mature contemporary. You know, it gives you that feeling of like rushing and running through like the fields and the grass, all those little tiny notes. I love it. I really like what they did. I think they retained what's cool about the song, did it their own way, and uh, that's pretty great. The acoustic is just so good. Next up from Rebirth Seiken Densetsu in 2011. This is Rising Sun, theme from Adventures, Sword, Children, Dawn of Mana. Composer and arranger Kenji Ito, chosen by Chiptune Brony. track and full of nostalgia man it um it speaks to how well uematsu captured something with uh i think that song of love how i like hear it in a lot of these jrpg themes really nice and a lot of great um changes too the different sections that it goes to are like some unexpected and really uplifting stuff that just kind of like keep breathing energy into this piece next up from crypt of the necro dancer this is fungal funk composed by danny bernowski but remixed by overclocked remix couldn't find an actual name says chris so it's the overclocked remix as you can see right there chosen by chris <laughs>
Yeah, I really like, um, it's nice to hear a dubstep with actual reggae, and it's nice to hear that switch up going from the, the dub reggae halftime feel to, uh, the triplet 4-4 four four thing. So cool. Just so dancing, like, kind of chaotic, and it's, like, precise, but kind of up and down and all over, which, you know, perfectly matches what you're doing in this game. I wonder what the original sounds like. Let's try to find it. Yeah, I'd say that the, the remix really honors the original a lot, but just heaves it up and it's not as, uh... Well, I was gonna say it's not as laid back, but, like... I think... It, You know, I re actually really prefer the way the arrangement um, transforms this part. Yeah, I like the way that the um, the remaster, the rearrangement does that uh, remix. How many re's can I get it wrong? Uh, the way that it's kind of like... Interesting. Yeah, that's actually a killer uh, remix. Big fan of that. Next up from Final Fantasy II, the Pixel Remaster. This is Pandemonium, originally composed by Nobuo Umatsu and arranged by Masaya Tsunamoto, chosen by Claudio. Just like that, it's over. What a beautiful, beautiful track. I hope you should check out the original, too. Pandemonium FF2. Almost sounds like, uh, oh, the Pandemonium Castle theme. Oh, this looks like another remake. Sis. Probably, I guess this is like the DS version. You know, it's like it's when that rhythm kicks in and it's and it and it's doing it in the um upbeats. It's just like very breathless and it's just like you've hopped on a horse and yeah. Ooh. You know with the limited voicings on the uh, NES, it has a very more like solemn like you're hearing something deadly important from a, a prophet that appears to you at a temple, you know? Yeah, way more melancholy. And creepy. <laughs> what, are you saying, uh, Rudy, if I called you up on the phone? And I said... Rudy, I have something to say to you. 
not creepy. It's not creepy. No, not creepy. No, not creepy. Why too creepy? No, no, no. The next one's very interesting. Each of the three composers made a part of the track. You believe the first third is by Hirota, the middle session by Mitsuda, and the later part by Kenji Ito. Oh, that lines up cool with, uh, we just heard some Kenji Ito earlier. So, <clears throat> wow, Rudy knows how I do this. So next up is from Shadow Hearts Covenant, released in 2004. This is Near Death Experience, the arrangement in 2005. So like Rudy just said, it's by Three Karma. Kogito, or no, sorry, the track is. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's very confusing. I, before I would read the name of the game, the name of the song. And now it's like, oh, it's from the album, Kogito Ergo Sum, and they've made a band called The Three Karma. Anyways, let's listen to this. Arranged by Yoshitaka Hirota, Yasunori Mitsuda, and Kenjiro, just like Rudy said. All right, why do I even exist?
That's great. I wonder why they uh, chose to do that. I mean, it works. Having these three different versions in it, uh, like a sort of Bohemian Rhapsody style uh, song composer, song arrangement. I guess if, if it was a final boss and it had three different phases, uh, that would work uh, perfectly. But it's really fun to hear those three totally different uh, styles on one song. And it just keeps getting more and more fucked up. Next up, another one from Final Fantasy XIV. This is Way to the World, in brackets, prelude, composed and arranged by Keiichi Okabe, which I believe is the composer for Near Automata. This is the copied factory Final Boss theme. So I think this is like some kind of a crossover with, um, with Near and Final Fantasy XIV. That's cool. song it's it's a uh, rearranging and remastering like I heard the prelude played in there but uh what's uh what track is it so this is something from I don't know what is this from like Final Fantasy 4 or 3 2 is it an older older one or was it something originally for Final Fantasy 14 and then they redid it for this Oh, this is just a, a theme from Near Automata? It sounds a lot different than that. Like the sort of the core choices and stuff. You know, the way it's. It doesn't sound like a near track. Oh, the, the, the percussion sounds a lot like a near track. But I find with the Near Automata soundtrack, there were a couple tracks in it that I loved to death that were my favorite that year. And there were some other ones that were a bit more. Um, I don't know. Generic, I guess. Maybe this is one of those ones that... Like the rhythm of... The rhythm sounds pretty familiar. I mean, I played near. I beat the game, you know, ten times or however many you have to do. 
pretty neat. Next up from Valkyrie Profile, the Arrange album in 1999. This is Requiem of a Predicament, composed and arranged by Mr. Sakuraba, chosen by Chiptune Brony. <laughs> Uh, this did come out in 2005, and uh, Absolution, the album by Muse, which has Hysteria on it, came out 2003. So, right around the time where it's just enough time for them to have heard it around the world and uh, <clears throat> and be inspired by it, but not be too old. So, anyway, let's check out the original. I just love that bass. <laughs> I love that pedal thing that goes across, but the way they use the stereo. Whoa, crazy stereo. I'm so glad I have two ears. Okay, so first we heard predicament and then the overall theme. Where's the crazy part? All right. We have a classic being remade here. Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic Generations. This is the modern version in that game. I guess originally composed by Masato Nakamura and remixed by Jun Senoe. Chosen by Chris.
You know, it's interesting. I think, um, now calling this chemical plant modern in brackets, I assume implies that there's like a chemical plant vintage or retro version or something from the different generations, I guess, of Sonic. So I feel like they probably already have a version that's really close to the one in Sonic 2 and they are like forced to come up with something different. And, uh, which is probably the only reason you would do something like this. Because you're taking, like, you know, Chemical Plant Zone is one of the tightest pop video game creations of all time. It's so fucking perfect. It's like a perfect storm of that incredible composer. They just had such a genius brainstorm to go with somebody who could... You know, who knew pop music and, uh, and bass and, and could program these songs on a synth for the Genesis and end up being such an amazing fit. And then them kind of catching their stride in Sonic 2 and even the game kind of building off the success of the first one and, and then Chemical Plans on just being the best song in the bunch, really. So it's, yeah, it's hard. It's like saying, hey, we're going to remake Stairway to Heaven. And it has to be different. So, I feel like there's some parts of this that are pretty interesting. Sometimes it kind of like, it just doesn't know where else to go. It's Because, you know, when it first starts off, there's a, there's a lot of kind of drone in the beginning. Because the bass is staying. It's staying right there and everything else is going around it. But the bass never changes. So it's this drone. So the whole time you're kind of waiting for it to like kind of explode. And then... It does end up, and the drums are like this kind of stop starty half time thing. And then the drums finally kick in. So we're kind of getting into second gear. And it's, but now, like, you're still just kind of doing the exact same riffs of the original, but slower because of this other arrangement you have going on. So it kind of lacks it. And then when it finally goes into this, it's like, it's good, but. This part is kind of too similar to the original that I just wish I was listening to the original. But it's got some cool ideas in it. I'm glad we listened to it. Next up, from Mario Kart 8. Released on the Wii U in 2014. This is Big Blue. Composed by Naota Ishida and arranged by Kenta Nagata. Chosen by Claudio. Please enjoy this live version. Yeah, I'm rapping with the sheet music. I like that snare sound. More saxophone. It does, yeah. <laughs> oh! I like the dueling, uh, the dueling solos. It works for like a race, you know, like you pull ahead, I pull ahead. Oh, wow! <laughs> That's pretty cool. I don't really have any memories of uh, Big Blue. I guess Big Blue is just um, like 
It says it was in the second DLC pack for Mario Kart 8. Doesn't really sound like an older track I've heard before. Other than like this, yeah, the Punch Out uh, tribute. I'll watch a bass solo. <laughs> hey, from Suicoden 2, what's uh, our second Suicoden track of the day? Suico Gaiden Volume 1, Swordsman of Harmonia. This is Gothic Necklord. You're such a Necklord. Composed and arranged by Miki Higashino, chosen by Rudy. Are you ready? Whoa. Castlevania, baby. Fuck yeah. Oh yes. Oh my god, yeah. It's those quick chord changes. Everything's kind of building up on the side and the side and then poof, right in front of your eyes. It's almost like a little magical incantation for other one. Wow. Kind of sounds like Mortal Kombat, doesn't it? All right, we've got just a few more. Next up from Celeste. This is Mirror Temple, the Mirror Magic Mix, composed by Lena Rain, but arranged by Two Mellow, chosen by Longbow. Good detective theme. That's so good, it's gonna turn me into Robert De Niro and Owen Wilson. Thank you. 
that swanky James Bond. -y. This is like as James Bond is executing his plan. Maybe someone's realizing that he was only using it. There's a double cross, double cross. James Bond loves no one. Not for long enough to get himself into trouble. Never too long to not be able to get out of trouble. Oh, cool. We're on the same page, Chris. Yeah, drops on a moonlit street. Fuck yeah. what it sounds like. Next up from Clock Tower, this is a PS1 remake. So I don't know if it's a remake on the PS1 of an older game. I think actually from some of the footage I saw, this is a remake of an older game that is now on the PlayStation. Composed by Koji Nikura and arranged by Kaori Takazoe, this is Death in the Elevator. Well, that's a bit of a spoiler. Chosen by Triptune Brony.
go that way, you idiot. That's where the noise is coming from. Oh my gosh, you can open the door? It's coming from the main foyer. Now I must know what happens in this. You know what it sounds like is a Radiohead's um, push-pull revolving doors. That is, I mean, that track was. Oh, there's no music in this game. Um, yeah, deep, dark, grinding percussion, just like you said. It's amazing. It's almost just like sound effects, and it really creates its own world. Incredible. And then it like breaks out of that constantly like it's just like pushes you in and grinding and then gives you these little moments of like levity and lightness and then goes back in and you can never really expect when that's going to happen what a cool synth it's fucking awesome wow our last one of the day thanks everybody for submitting these Thanks for watching, if you're watching the stream or the YouTube version. If you are watching the YouTube version, there should be a link to our Discord in the description. If there's not, just put a comment saying, Discord, and I'll hand deliver you a Discord link. You can join us. You can help pick the next theme. You can help uh, submit songs. It's fun. Thanks to everybody who have been keeping this alive. We should. I think we're almost due for a uh, music trivia show. Maybe we should do that. Next time, I don't know. All right, so next one is from Katamari Forever, Katamari and the Wings, originally composed by Yu Miyake and rearranged by Yoshihito Yano. grips on like it always just sounds like it's kind of like the beat sounds like it's picking up all these little elements and jamming them on and yeah it's just so fun and it's just celebratory I'd like to hear uh, the original aren't you got my wings boom bada boom ba doom bada this is also Get me a fucking boxing ring. And then it just gets so, <laughs> so happy. 
Yeah. You know, the nice thing with the arrangement is that it gives it a much fuller, kind of wider stereo sound. And I, I like that the arrangement exists for sure. This is, this is great for the last time I like. Actually, if this is the only one I'd have heard, I really want to, but I just, I do kind of miss everything that arrangement was playing. This is an amazing song, the sound vaccination. All right, that was great, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you on the Discord, and we'll uh, pick the next theme, or maybe we can do music trivia next week. Or... But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. This was a lot of fun. I've been playing a bunch of a Breath of the Wild finally, finally getting into that, so maybe I'll come on and give some thoughts on that. If anybody gives a shit, or we can just kind of get together and uh, talk about it. But, yeah, this was a lot of fun. This was nice to... Um, they were, like, really fun tracks. You know, I think you could hear that the composers were enjoying what they were doing, and... I liked a lot of the ones that were kind of live, too, you know. I like, especially when the composer was, um, you know, forming a band and playing them. Just really fun. So thanks to uh, Chiptune Brony, who had the original idea of doing arranged tracks. Although their idea was more limited to only arrangements of, like, very old NES or Super Nintendo. But I'm glad we opened it up and, uh, um, yeah, the way they opened it up, just having the arrangements from all over the place was great. Yeah, I, I, I could talk about it without any spoilers. I'm pretty good at talking about games without any spoilers. I've practiced a long time. I could talk about just how something feels. There are maybe some specifics. I will say that Tears of the King... On the one hand, some elements it adds are so fitting with what I love about Breath of the Wild, where it's like very open-ended and creative. And you can find solutions for things in, in just like a totally crazy creative way. There's some elements of it that do that. And then there's other elements, um, the tools that it gives you that are very, very specific. Where it feels like, oh, this kind of feels like old Zelda where they've given me a square and it needs to go into a square hole. You know, and a circle needs to go into a circle hole. Whereas other elements are like, well, why don't you just make something that is not a square or a circle and go around this obstacle. So... But it's, I mean, yeah, it's its more of that Breath of the Wild vibe. I would advise people to start with Breath of the Wild. I think it would be hard to go back to Breath of the Wild after getting used to all these new tools. But I do miss some things from Breath of the Wild. I miss having the bombs. Unless it's coming later, I don't know. And, uh... Yeah, this is going to be a fun year for, for me in games. Um, what games were there last year? Oh, if you're watching the YouTube video, I'll stop it soon. No, I'll just I'll stop the YouTube video now. Thanks.